Hey boos, in this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Oh, hell no. Hi guys, it's Yanni and I'm back with another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the full episode of Insecure Season 4, Episode 4. Where is Condola? Condola is M-I-A. She is missing. And I just want to know, where did she go? She just completely disappeared. She's not answering Issa's texts, her phone calls, nothing. And why do I have a feeling that this has something to do with Lawrence? And I'm going to be upset if Lawrence ruin this opportunity for Issa because it just seems like everything in the beginning was going so well for Issa. Everything with the block party seemed to be such a success. Everything was in line. Everything was in order. Then all of a sudden, Condola goes missing and it has something to do with Lawrence. And now all of a sudden, the block party seems to be a mess now. I do have a feeling that Nathan may come in and save the day. I don't know why. I just have that feeling. But I think Condola missing has something to do with Lawrence. I think the block party and the issues that Issa seems to be facing this episode has to do with Lawrence as well, has to do with Condola. So maybe Molly was right. Maybe Issa working with Condola was a bad idea, but only time will tell. Another thing that I wanted to talk about within this week's episode was the fact that Molly's co-workers, we were able to finally meet Molly's co-workers. Molly has a real struggle when it comes to work and life balance and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that she doesn't have friends that have such a high demanding job that she has and she doesn't know how to balance work versus home life and I think if she was to hang around women like herself like the co-workers that we saw in this episode I think she would be able to manage her work life and her home life because they were able to joke about how their husbands or their significant others needed them them home at a certain time and Molly has never had a significant other long enough she's always thrown herself in her work so Molly is now able to see how it's done how the women that she works with how they're able to balance work life and home life also the parking car scene where Molly and Issa were battling out for the parking spot now with me analyzing the scene I feel that Issa is tired of being the bigger person. Now in this scene she ended up being the bigger person and finding a different parking spot but I think that their friendship is going to come to a head because Issa is just tired of always folding. She's tired of always being the bigger person because after a while it kind of feels like you're a pushover and I think Issa wants more respect when it comes to Molly. She wants more respect from Molly. She wants to be seen as an equal. She doesn't want to be seen less than. She wants to be seen as an equal. Molly has this way of doing things where she feels that she's better or she feels that she's entitled to certain things because of her status and Issa is no longer wanting to put up with that she still respects Molly but she wants respect in return and she wants to be treated as an equal so I feel that that scene that was all about Issa she's getting fed up with her listening to a friend's podcast if you watch the scene again you will hear her listening to a podcast that has something to do with friendship so I think Issa is just getting really really fed up. Eventually they're both going to explode because they are being super passive aggressive. Also Nathan calling. I think every girl has a male friend like Nathan. Nathan is the type of guy that you can have fun with but not someone that you would ever take serious but someone that supports your dreams your crazy dreams at that. I think every girl has a male friend like Nathan but like I said before you don't treat 
all men the same. You put men in categories. And for me personally, I would put Nathan in the category of just having fun with him because he doesn't seem reliable. He disappears a lot, but you can always count on him to call and be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing it. And he's just like that voice of motivation, that voice of being just optimistic, something that Issa really needs to hear right now because her block party seems to be falling through the cracks and she's having a lot of issues with it. So to get that voicemail message, I think that probably lifted her spirit and probably helped her in some way mentally, but she's still stressed out because everything seems to be falling apart when it comes to her block party. Also, I found this scene to be interesting when Tiffany's husband, Derek, was having a conversation with Lawrence in the nursery with the baby. He was basically saying that his fear for his daughter is that some guy will come along and treat her the way that he treated some of the women from his past. And this is a great example of what I mean when I say men never treat every woman that they encounter the same. They tend to treat us differently depending on what we allow and what we tolerate. So of course, another thing that I noticed about Tiffany is Tiffany carries herself in a very feminine nature. And one episode, if you go back to season one, Tiffany was saying how the reason why her and Derek's relationship is goals is because Derek allows her to be a woman and Tiffany allows Derek to be a man within their marriage. So it works for them. And that was something that I wanted to highlight. This is a great example of me saying that men never treat every woman the same. They treat each woman differently. Hospital, I felt like I was gonna pass out. I told them no one would listen to me and it turned out I had a blood clot. Oh my Are God. you serious? Yes. Girl, these doctors need to start listening to us. That's how they almost killed Serena. Also, in this episode, they highlighted a very, very serious issue within the Black community when it comes to Black women in childbirth and how when we are in pain, we are ignored. However, because Derek was there, her husband was able to support her in her time of need. He was able to speak up for her and say, hey, there's something wrong with my wife. She's not like this. This is not like her. And he was able to get her help. And that's when they found out she had a blood clot. So it's something that is a serious issue within the black community among black women in childbirth and I'm glad that they decided to highlight that within this episode. It's not even a big deal but I just felt like she's been on my neck lately. She has about what? Just little things here and there acting like I'm the messiest bitch on earth like her life is perfect. Maybe she's just taking shit out on you you know? Okay. Employee. Uh, I'm gonna go do another one. <laughs> also, when it comes to Molly and Issa's relationship, they need to stop being so passive aggressive. They're both passive aggressive and they're not communicating. So they need to communicate. They need to have a sit down. I mean, literally their passive aggressiveness is based off of tension that's between them in miscommunication. But this is a great example of if you have a friend and there's tension between you guys, sit down and have a conversation about it because you may be having an aggressive nature towards your friend over miscommunication. It may not even be an issue between you guys. It's just that you guys need to sit down and communicate to each other and stop being passive aggressive because it's only making the tension build, build, and build. You don't want the tension to get to a point to where you guys explode or one of you guys explode and then you regret saying something to the other person. You just want to air out the tension. If there's ever tension within a friendship, you just need to have a conversation about it and clear the air so that you guys can move on. So Lawrence, being being at Tiffany and Derek's house, he seems to want that old thing back. He seems to want Issa back. But my question is this, does Lawrence want Issa back because of what Condola did? Basically, Condola rejected Lawrence. Is he only wanting her back because he was rejected because he wants to go back to a place where he's comfortable? Also, my question is, did Lawrence really level up? Did he really level up or did he just get a job? Level up takes emotional maturity. It also takes reflection. And has Lawrence emotionally taking time out of his life to deal with his issues emotionally to where he really has leveled up? That is a question that I have for you guys. A lot of you guys were commenting under my last video saying that all he did was get a job. Did he actually take time out of his life to heal and to grow from the experience that he went through with Issa? Probably not. I think it takes men longer, but hopefully he doesn't hurt Issa in the end and that may be a possibility or Issa may end up rejecting him because he didn't really grow like he claimed 
blames or like his perception gives off. I think that maybe he is just putting on this persona like he's changed, he's doing better, but is he really doing better? Also, my favorite scene out of this episode were the bathroom mirror scenes. This is a great example of mental health and what that looks like. And sometimes people find it to be weird when you talk to yourself, but in reality, it's the most sane thing that you can do, especially if you struggle with mental health. So I love seeing how Issa checks in on herself. And honestly, it's an example that I like to use. The voice that you project doesn't sound like the voice inside your head. So sometimes you have to check in with yourself like, hey girl, you doing okay? Are you good in there? Everything cool with you? It's real. That's what mental health looks like. That's what it means to be mentally aware and mental health awareness. That's what it looks like. So I love that part of the episode. It's bringing mental health awareness to the forefront and I am here for it. Lastly, the last scene that I wanted to talk about is this scene where Molly doesn't ask Andrew to help Issa with her headline. And honestly, I think Molly's just tired of being the friend who constantly comes behind her and cleans up her mess. Especially when Issa doesn't call to simply check up on her to see how she's doing, to see if everything is good in her world. Issa is always reaching out when she needs something or when she wants something, but she never checks in on Molly just to check in on her. And I think Molly's getting really tired of that. And so now that she feels that she has something good going with Andrew, she just doesn't want to ruin it. She doesn't want to risk it for Issa. And she kind of feels like she wants to protect this thing because she really wants it to work. I think Issa needs to be more understanding of her reasoning behind why she didn't ask Andrew and she should just respect it and move on. And hopefully Issa won't hold it against her for why she did not reach out to Andrew for help with her headline. So that's all that I have regarding this review. I would love your thoughts, opinions. So make sure you comment them down below. And my question for today is this, do you feel Lawrence leveled up? With these last few episodes that are going to be airing within the coming weeks, I want to see if it really is true. Like did Lawrence really level up or is it just this perception that he puts on now because he has a job? That's something that I've been wondering for these last few episodes. Like did he really level up or did he just get a job? I don't know, a better job. I don't know. I would love your thoughts and opinions. So make sure you comment them down below. And if you're new here, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you are notified and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Oh, 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 oh,